Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to tonight's WEC News broadcast. Here at WEC, we pride ourselves on always providing you with the most current news. As we were going through our archives earlier today, we found none other than this ancient envelope. Inside, recordings from ancient Jerusalem. Tonight, WEC is proud to present, from our archives, Christianity Through the Ages. Joining us live now is Netta, a Jewish follower of Jesus. Welcome. Thank you. Why do you follow Jesus? Well, what you see was, I used to be possessed by the demon type, but then I heard about this man, Jesus of Nazareth, who's been going around performing miracles, so I had to go and test it out, see what it was all about. And there was about maybe say 5,000 of us up on a hill. And the man fed us all fish and bread. I don't know how he came up with that much fish and bread, but I knew from that point on he was the real deal. So I did everything I could to get myself in front of Jesus. And what do you know, as soon as the man touched me, he said, be gone to the demon. And I was free. And I've been going around proclaiming his glory ever since. Wow. What sets him apart from other teachers in your view? Well, my view, see, what I've heard about him is that he's descended from the line of David. That's why I think he's different from all of these other rabbis going around and all the Pharisees. He preaches love, and I like that. That's all for now. Thanks. Live at the scene, here is where Jesus Christ has been crucified. This is the cross that he was crucified on. From th this point, we think that Jesus has been buried in a tomb by some of his followers. I have just received word breaking news that Jesus has resurrected. There have been sightings all over Jerusalem. More for you later. We're here today with Prefect Pontius Pilate, the man who many blame for the death of Jesus of Nazareth. Tell me, Pontius, how do you respond to this controversy? Well, I found no guilt in Jesus and the supposed crimes he was charged with, in my view, didn't amount to crimes at all. However, the Jewish people were given the choice whether to save Jesus or Barabbas, and they chose Barabbas, and I adhere to their decision. Thank you for sharing your side of the story with us. WEC News is live here at Antioch with Paul the Apostle, who managed an exclusive interview before he departs on his third mission trip. So tell me, Paul, what does it mean to be a Christian? As Christians, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and we are each imbued with the Holy Spirit, which helps us to live our lives according to God's wishes. So how does one become a Christian? In order to become a Christian, you must accept Jesus into your heart and truly believe that he is the Savior of humankind. How is Jesus a Savior of humankind? When Jesus was crucified, his life became a sacrifice that absolved everyone from the guilt of their sins. Well, thank you, Paul. Back to you, Dan. So to recap what you just saw, we heard from a Jewish convert. Then we took you live to the scene of Jesus' crucifixion. And then we spoke with Pontius Pilate, who told us his side of the story of Jesus' execution. And finally, we talked to Paul, who told us about his mission trips. Our records are spotty for the next 1,500 years or so, but we've put together a summarization of the timeline's main points. The next major event in the Christian history is the conversion of Constantine, a Roman emperor, following his major success at a military battle in 313. After this, the Roman Empire was officially Christian, which means that the persecution was over. Following that, Rome and Constantinople wanted to be separate spots of religious authority. Tensions rose between the two, leading to excommunications of each other's religious leaders. And then, dueling papacies rose from each. And then the Eastern Western Church broke apart, which was called the Great Schism in 1054. Next were the Crusades, which began at the end of the 11th century. These wars raged for the next centuries, and violence um, defined them. Next, we have more records to show. We have received reports that there is somebody sneaking around the Wittenberg Castle Church. There he is now! Excuse me, sir. What are you doing? Well, I'm posting my 95 theses. It's my grievances against the Catholic Church. 
What are your grievances? Well, a few of them are highlighted here that in selling, in, selling indulgences to pay for St. Peter's is wrong, and the Pope has no power over purgatory, and buying indulgences leads to a false sense of security and sometimes endanger salvation. You heard it here first, folks. We're here with Martin Luther, nailing his 95 theses to the Wittenberg Castle Church door. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is Romans chapter 6, verse 23, and I'm reading today from my newly published King James Bible. This is the first English translation of the Word of God, and it has been an invaluable resource to colonizers as they spread Christianity across the globe. This is the Bible. It is comprised of the Old Testament, which is derived from Hebrew scriptures and talks about stories like creation and the time before Jesus Christ. Also in it is the New Testament, which comprises of the Gospels and stories from the Apostles who describe the coming of Jesus, his work, and the lessons taken from it afterwards. Many Christians today regard the Bible in different ways. Some think that it is just a historical text that they can consult from time to time, but others see it as very authoritative and that they must adhere to its word entirely in their lives. And that concludes the history portion of our segment tonight. We're here in West Studios to talk to you about the major beliefs of modern Christianity today. A major practice in Christianity is baptism in which water is sprinkled on the forehead or a person is submerged in it that signifies the entrance and acceptance of the Holy Spirit into their body. Another major tradition practiced in many Christian churches is the taking of communion, also known as the Eucharist. Christians eat bread and drink wine to symbolize the body and blood of Jesus Christ and it replicates the meal that Jesus ate before his crucifixion. Another major belief in Christianity today is the tradition of the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity is the idea that God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three in one, like a triangle. All of these are separate entities, but at the same time they are all one being. This has been a WEC News special report from the archives. <laughs>